It's time for this week's episode of Brandon Sports Talk, featuring in-depth interviews from those who are trending in the world of athletics. And now, here's the host of Brandon Sports Talk, Brandon Pate. Welcome back to Brandon Sports Talk. In today's episode, I have the privilege to interview the USA Paralympian track and field and long jump, Beatrice Hatz. How are you doing today? Hi, I'm doing really well today. How are you? I'm doing good. Can you talk about how you knew that you wanted to get into track and field? Well, that's actually kind of a funny story because I started track a little late. In, in my opinion, some people would say no, but... Um, I started track in high school and it was kind of a joke at first. So like I had a, a few friends that were like, oh, Beatrice, you beat me at softball and basketball and, you know, all these other sports. And they were like, I'm going to beat you at track. And so we made a, like a bet saying, you know, well, whoever makes one varsity track meet by the end of this, this freshman year season gets to claim the title of being the the most athletic in the friend group right and um so the junior varsity team their season ends like a little bit early because they don't make it to state qualifying track meet or state in general and then like there's there's a couple more before that and so before those like last those last few meets the the coaches will like announce it and say okay so and so is being pulled up from jb to varsity and I got announced on my like freshman year and it was like super cool. I was like, oh yeah, I made this. And my friend did not. So I like won the little bet. I got the right to be the most athletic in the group. And then um, it just kept going from there. Cause it was like, oh wait, this is actually kind of fun. Like I'm, I'm super competitive, but that just like made it even better. Of course, what was it like competing in high school and middle school in track and field? So, like, high school was just different. Like, middle school, I didn't compete in track because it just wasn't, like, cool to me at the time. Um, I was doing, like, softball and basketball, and I thought I was pretty fast. And then um, freshman year, I was like, oh, okay, that was the reason I took the bet. Because I was like, oh, I could probably do that because all my other sports, this could just be training for, for softball or for basketball, I could just use it as conditioning. And then uh, high school rolls around and it was really cool because what I enjoyed the most was actually competing with able-bodied people because I would just show up like in my lane, right? And then everybody kind of, you all like judge each other basically. You sit there, oh, she looks fast or oh, she doesn't look fast. And then people would look over at me and they kind of like, Mm, okay whatever like they would dismiss me because of my leg right and they would just kind of be like oh good good for you you're here and then by the end of the race when I would come in like second or third then like I could see it in their face the respect that I gained from them which I liked but at the same time it's not fair that I had to gain the respect versus everybody automatically already had their respect But what I did like was that I could see the change and I was respected by the end of the race and I had proven myself. How did it feel in 2018 to be named to the Paralympic track and field high school level? It was it was really exciting. Um, I remember being named like to the, the junior world championship team. Like, I remember that day, my mom got a phone call. We're sitting in the car. She's like, everybody, everybody quiet. I'm I'm with all my cousins. We went to the same school. 
And so it's just a bunch of us in the car, my brothers, my mom and my cousin. And then, you know, she gets a phone call. Would you like to accept your spot on Team USA for Junior World Championships? And you get to go to Switzerland, represent our country and all three of your Paralympic events. Oh my gosh, it was like the coolest thing ever. It's a day that I'm not gonna forget because like all my cousins are cheering, they're so excited and my mom is super happy for me. And like, it, it was just cool. And as soon as I got home, my dad was like so ecstatic about it. What was, how is it like competing in the 100 and 200 meters? I personally like the 100 more than the 200 but the hundred is a little more like, I guess both events are a little stressful, but the hundred more so just because you have less time um, and it, it's really, really technical. And there's so many phases of the race that need to go well in order for you to run a good time. If you mess up your start, that's it. You're done. Basically, there's no point in you running that. And then you know, if you come up too early, now you have to hold that like top speed longer, which is hard. But in the 200, like if you get out the blocks a little sluggish, you still have enough time to like catch up to everybody, but it, it just, you have to put in a little more work. And I don't like the 200 as much as I like the 100 because the 100, you, you're over with it a lot quicker. <laughs> Of course, after you got that phone call that you made the team, what was the feeling like when you got to compete for the first time in the long jump for Team USA? So that was that was like the coolest thing because at that time, I was 17 years old. This is my junior like world champs. And it was like a huge me. It was the first time I had even flown internationally. And to compete in the long jump was super cool. I, I ended up getting a silver medal for juniors and then um, two golds for my 100 and 200, also a junior. And, but like the long jump was my favorite event and I was just happy to be competing. And then honestly, at that time, I wasn't even jumping off my blade yet. I was jumping off of my like good side. Um, so like to see the change from then to now is kind of crazy because now I only know how to jump off my, my prosthetic. Um, but it was, it was the coolest thing because it's my, my favorite event. I was really hyped about it. Of course, what is it like obviously representing Team USA in long jump? Overall, like representing the United States in general is just an honor. You get to wear that flag on your chest and you're just like, I'm here, We're, we are the United States, we are awesome, and we, we got to show out and show the world that the United States is full of amazing athletes. What was the preparation like for you preparing for the Paralympics? It was, it was kind of um, intense because after I graduated high school, in 2019, the Paralympic Games were supposed to happen in 2020. So I had taken a like gap year so that I could focus solely on going to the Paralympic Games. And then I planned on going to school afterwards. But then COVID happened and it turned into two years. So it was a blessing in disguise because I did need more training and I did need to get stronger and to focus on my nutrition more. Um, but obviously with COVID, like leading up to it, it was pretty difficult. There was like a mental toll. Everything was just like a little more stressful and sad and you can't be around people. And then, I mean, when I moved away from my family, that was the first time being away from my family for so long. Um, my family is really close. We are Hispanic. So like, it's just in our culture to, to be very tight knit family. And all my cousins and I and my grandparents, we live blocks away from each other. So then living blocks away, going to the same elementary school together, same middle school, same high school, and spending every day together to me just like leaving was extremely difficult for me. I like could not be away from my family. I went through 
you know, a little bit of a depression. I missed my family a lot. And then eventually I found my way in San Diego. I made a lot of new friends and a few people took me under their wings and they showed me around and showed me, you know, how to have a good time, but also, you know, stay focused as an athlete. So it was, it was difficult prepping for the games, but then having a good coach, you know, coach Chris Mack, he's an amazing coach. He knows what he's doing is great. Gustavo Osorio. So he's my um, strength and conditioning coach. He's literally the best. I mean, if I tell him I can't do a certain exercise because of my disability, he's going to adapt and change it. And that, that right there is what makes a good coach and what makes me be able to, you know, become a better athlete because he's working around all these like things to make it so that I can do this exercise. And now I'm getting stronger because he's got the ability to figure it out. And then on top of that, I've got my nutritionist. So that's that right there, those three people, that's team Beatrice right there. And they are like my biggest support system. And obviously other than my family. And so they definitely prepped me. And I think I was just, I'm still really young. So I've got a lot more games left in me and the games didn't go the way I wanted. But preparation wise, I think, this is the best that we could do with the time we had. They still like had recently met me. So now I think I've got more time with them. I've got more time to focus on my nutrition and my strength. And like, here comes Paris, you know? Of course, how was that feeling like when you got the call slash email that you made the Paralympic team to go to Tokyo? Oh, it was awesome. It was, it was like super cool. I mean, I had my parents with me and we're sitting there on like this Zoom call and everybody's name is getting announced and you have to put yourself on mute so that you're not like screaming for joy because some of the people on the Zoom did not get their name called. So you had to kind of like hold it together if you did and also hold it together if you didn't. So my parents and I are sitting there, we're a little stressed out and, you know, finally they call my name and we're just like, like dying on the inside you want to like scream and celebrate and um it, it was really cool I I knew that I was gonna make the team because of my performance at the you know um, nationals or so the nationals were to qualify and I had hit my a standard and that's like what you need to go to the game so I was like I better qualify like I'm set to go and Sure enough, I was. Of course, after your name was called, what was the preparation like in those months leading into the Paralympic Games preparing? It was a lot of just like making sure, okay, this is how we want to execute the race. So it was a lot of talking through it with my coach, a lot of, hey, I want you to stay down longer. I want you to focus on your arms. I want you to push out the blocks harder. So it was, we were working on a lot more technical stuff leading up to it that I could try to fix and also maintaining my conditioning and strength, but also not trying to overwork myself so that we could avoid injury. So it was, um, it was a bit of a balancing act, but um, I left that all up to my coaches and they did a great job. Of course, how was it like when you got the Paralympic gear and you saw the Paralympic rings on your jersey and obviously the U.S. flag on it. It was, it was the coolest thing ever. I mean, we walked into our rooms in Tokyo and it, it's like Christmas. You feel like a little kid again. You feel like you're five. You just drop everything in the hallway and you see these big bags that say USA and, you know, the Ralph Lauren bag and the Nike bag. And so then you're like, oh, my gosh. And you're, you're a grown adult, but you, it's, it feels like Christmas for you. And you're opening the bags and just like looking through everything and trying everything on. And finally, when I put the uniform on, I was like, this is it. This is the coolest thing that has happened to me ever. And I mean, thus far, hopefully it will happen again. But first games experience, opening all that gear was the coolest thing ever. Of course, on race day, what was it like getting to put on that Team USA uniform and have Team USA on your chest in the Paralympic rings? It was, it was cool. It's such an honor to, to be able to just even be at the games. And then on top of that, be a part of the United States team. 
that's that's like the best and then you know getting ready to go compete um I like to show up looking all glamorous so I do my crazy makeup and I do my space buns and my headband that's my signature look and um I don't know getting prepared for it it just like if you look good you feel good you run good and so like you feel really good in that uniform you feel really good makeup all done and it was just like it was dope it was honestly biggest honor of my life of course what were some of your game day routines and rituals like at the Paralympics um I would try to the night before I know what I'm going to do so for my race if I have my 200 in the morning at night I try to like in the evening, I try not to walk around as much. I try to relax more. I try to do, you know, get a, a flush out um, massage and then I'll sit there and think about how I want to execute my race. What do I want to do? And so I sit there, I close my eyes and I try to like envision my race. I'm obviously going to envision myself winning, but I need to also envision, okay, this part of the curve, how, where do I want to start? Like actually hitting it harder, like, or, you know, how do I want to come out of the blocks? How do I want to finish the race? How do I want my, you know, arms to look when I'm running and do I, you know, so like you focus on the little things and sometimes they may not happen during the race, but envisioning a good race is the first step for me. And then day of I'll, listen to music. I take an extra long time during my warm up to make sure my body feels good. And then you sit in that call room and that's, that's stressful. Honestly, it comes down to how you handle yourself in that call room. Of course, how is it like standing in front of the Paralympic rings, knowing that you made it to the Paralympics? It was, it was really cool. So we got to go into the stadium, um, a couple of days before competing there and like you get to like practice on the track get to check it out and oh my gosh I just I thought I was gonna have like a panic attack I walk in and it's just so overwhelming it's this huge stadium and I feel my heart just boom 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 going a million miles an hour and I'm just like this is it this is where I'm gonna compete this is where I'm gonna perform I gotta do an amazing job and it was just like overwhelming, but also really joyful. Like I've never seen a be more beautiful drag. Of course, what were some of your favorite memories and moments in your first Paralympic Games? I think some of my favorite memories will probably always be just in general, being around my friends that are also there with me. They and my friends and my teammates, they're always the ones that are going to support you. They're sitting there, okay, everybody needs to remember Beatrice's race at this time or Jaylene races at this time or the so-and-so races at this time. So we're all like really supportive of each other. We, you know, we saw some people stressed out. Hey, come over here. What's going on? Like we would support each other, but also had a lot of fun, always sticking together, exploring, you know, the Olympic village together and it was just cool um, experience to have. Like not a lot of people can say they can, you know, travel to Japan with their friends. How does it feel to have Paralympian behind your last name? I think it's it's cool. I, mean, I still I'm trying to get used to it because I'm like, oh my gosh, that is like a huge title. That's it's like an important title. You can't just like throw it around like whatever. But. I mean, to me, it almost feels like, almost like a doctor, right? Like when you work hard enough to get your degree to become a doctor, you're, you're obviously not going to be like, oh, yeah, just call me my regular name. No, put doctor in front of it, you know, like acknowledge that. So I feel the same. Obviously, it's not academic and stuff like that. But like, I put my name on that, you know, like I worked extremely hard for it. And I'm going to own it. And I'm going to I'm going to continue to say that every chance I get. Oh, hello, I'm Beatrice. I'm also a Paralympian, by the way. Like, I worked hard for that. So it's it's really great. Of course, what was it like living out your Paralympic dream? It was 
Mm, that's like a really good question. There's like an internal conflict actually, because you know, you, you reach that that high point. You're you're living that dream. You're already okay. I worked so hard. I'm a Paralympian now. I went to the games now. Now you're coming off of that that high point. You're like, what do I do now? You know, we just train for the next one. Okay, like it's a little less anticlimactic now, but like you have to enjoy the moment when you're at that high peak. You have to take everything in because you worked so hard for what you wanted. Now that you have it, okay, now you have to reset yourself. Okay, I've achieved this goal. What's another goal that I want to achieve? What's another thing that I want to do? Obviously, I want to go to the next games, but how do I want to go to those games? I want to go in faster. What times do I want to hit? Like all this, all that. And then now you have something to work towards and now it becomes more of a challenge and that's what I want I want to feel like okay I'm working hard this is this is going to be difficult but I'm going to do it and I can achieve it versus like okay I have finally achieved this it's overwhelming and like amazing and exciting and then now you're coming down and now you have to reset yourself so um it was great but also that point of having to reset yourself can also really like be kind of depressing because you're like again like I said now what now what I do but there's good and bad was what were any of your accomplishments during the Paralympic Games um I finished I didn't have good finishes that I wanted but I did compete at the games at you know, 20 years old. So I feel like I should cut myself a little slack, but I'm also like, that's not what I wanted to happen. And obviously that means that I just need to work harder, but I finished, you know, fifth place in the 200. And um, I think fifth in the um, long jump as well. And then my hundred was, somewhere around there but not the finishes that I wanted of course how is it like competing in the long jump at the Paralympic Games at the biggest stage of them all long jump is honestly out of the three events to me is mentally the most difficult not like physically I don't know I think it's just so mentally tough because you have a lot of downtime and what it is too is you're sitting there, one, you're you're this is the biggest stage of your life. You know, these are the biggest games. You know your mom's watching you on TV, so you gotta behave yourself and you also gotta, gotta show out, show them, okay, mom, I worked really hard and I, I left our family so that I could go do this and I'm gonna prove myself to you, right? Like I wanna show everybody, but then it's it's like your mom, your dad, you you sit there and you think about your family. And you want to do an amazing job, but then, so you start thinking about that when you're not supposed to, or you sit there, you have a lot of time after your turn, everybody else is going and they have you sitting out there. So now you're watching somebody else jump and you have to make sure that you stay in your right mindset. Because once you start to, oh, did you see how she did that? Maybe I should start doing that then you don't want to change anything in the middle of your competition. And that's what's so mentally difficult that you need to stay on track with your stuff. You need to not distract yourself. But some people like, it stresses me out watching other people compete in the long jump. So I try to sit there. I look at literally anything else. We are not allowed to have our phones. So I'm like trying to watch literally anything else until it's my turn because I don't want to stress myself out. I don't want to be like, she jumped this far. Like, okay, who cares? She jumped that far. She's not me. I need to do me. I need to do what I'm here to do. So it's, it's just mentally difficult because you have so much downtime. And that downtime is honestly like comes down to how you talk to yourself mentally. Are you hyping yourself up or are you scaring yourself? Are you staying focused or are you focusing on other people? So that's what's more difficult about the long jump. Who are some of the influential people and who are some of the people that you look up to in the sport of track and field? 
So somebody who's like really influential to me or somebody that I look up to and I think it's like the coolest thing ever that I can call her my friend is Tatiana McFadden. She's like literally the best in everything that she does. And like, I don't know, I'm just like, oh my God, it's Tatiana McFadden. And like, I remember when she like got to our room or our suite, it's almost like a little apartment and everybody's got their own room and you're sharing with other teammates and Tatiana shows up and she's in our room. And it was just so exciting. I was like, I get to be with somebody that I look up to. This is somebody who, like, I should ask all these questions. You know, I should ask, how do you, what should I do to fix my mental health? Or how do you do this for your mental health? How do you stay in the game? How do you push yourself so hard? Like, you're the best at everything. She's going to be the one to ask. But, I mean, she, she's like somebody I definitely look up to. What are some of your future plans in the sport of track and field? I want to be the best. I want to be best in my category one day. And that may not be today or tomorrow, but I have a lot of time. I'm young and I am going to work hard towards that goal. I want to, I want to hold a world record. I want to, to be the best in my class. I want to put in that work to be the best. I don't want to just talk and say I'm going to be the best you know I want to work towards that and I'm going to work towards that that's that's my end goal I don't want to just compete at another games I want to medal I want to I want to be the best of course what advice would you give young track and field long jumpers such as yourself I would give them some advice um I would tell them if you're in high school definitely do your research. Don't just um, blindly trust your coaches in high school because my high school coaches came from like different sports. You know, they did not specifically know about long jump or, you know, then when I switched over during summer season and I started running with my club team coach, I was like, okay, I'm learning so much. So I would definitely tell that anybody if you want to start long jumping watch some videos learn the technique like take care of your body recovery is the best thing that you can do definitely be careful and um i think that's as much advice as i can give is honestly just like look into it more because um it's something that you don't want to do incorrectly because that can lead to injury What advice would you have people that are looking to go to the Paralympics for the first time like you did or multiple times? I'd say don't let anybody stop you. Don't don't let yourself. I mean, those are there's times where you sit there and you're like, what am I what am I doing? This is so hard. But you need to get over that. That's something that you can't let yourself get into. But also there will be people in your life that say, it's just the Paralympics or it's, it's it's just track. Why are you working? Why are you working so hard? Or like there's people who, out there that are not going to understand that this is a full-time job. You need to dedicate your life to being an athlete. And there's some people that will not understand that. They're not going to understand why you can't come out on a Saturday and go drink or go party or go do this or do that. You know, you have to sacrifice certain things. I haven't seen my family in in a little while, you know. So, like, be prepared to have to sacrifice for your goal. But also, like, make sure those sacrifices are worth it to you. Make sure that you're mentally strong enough to go through this, to, to like, put yourself in this position. If you want it bad enough, you're going to do it. And make sure that nobody stands in your way. That's great advice. Where can my listeners find you at on social media? You can find me on Instagram or Facebook. Um, My Instagram is bhats with a Z underscore track. Thank you again, Beatrice Hats, for your interview and best luck in your future in the U.S. Paralympic track and field long jump. Thank you. Appreciate it. 
You can find Brandon Sports Talk on Facebook at Brandon Sports Talk, Instagram at Brandon Sports Talk, Twitter at Talk underscore Brandon, and you can find me on YouTube at Brandon Sports Talk. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you again, Beatrice Hats, for your interview, and best of luck in your future. Thank you so much. You've been watching Brandon Sports Talk. Please feel free.